had the airplane about a year now, so I'm doing the condition inspection. And I just want to make a quick video on a little upgrade that I'm going to do while it's all torn, torn apart and I can get to um, the wiring. Um, up to this point, I've been using the Stratus 2S as my ADS-B end solution. And that only transmits the information to the iPad. There's none of that displayed on the EFIS. So um, GRT has come up with a solution for that. We've got this ADS-BN receiver box that's going to hardwire to the EFIS with two serial lines, an in and out serial. Um, so this should be pretty easy to install. It's got four wires, a positive, a negative, and then a serial in and out. And then a coaxial uh, cable that's going to go down to an antenna that i got to put on the belly. I think the antenna will be probably the hardest part of the installation. But what this does is it effectively eliminates the need for the Stratus 2S. It also has the capability to Bluetooth the, the information to the iPad. So I'll have it displayed hardwired on the EFIS and also Bluetooth over to the iPad. And the cool thing about it is it takes with the serial out from the EFIS, the ADHARS information goes through the box and then transmits over to the iPad. So I don't lose the ADHARS information that would be coming from the Stratus. Still get all that full motion information. Um, I'll probably keep the Stratus in here as a backup. But the cool part of this is I'll eliminate the need to be charging it all the time. So that frees up my power supply that I've been using pretty exclusively for the Stratus. Um, that way I can you know, charge a phone or um, my cameras, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna get this installed and then I'll show you guys the results. Uh, like I said, it's four wires and then uh, antenna cable. So if I find a place to mount it and uh, get all that situated. Um, and then uh, I'll show you how it works. All right guys, so I've got the ADSB receiver installed. Um, the the uh, plug's all set up, wired in, antenna wires run. I did run it down to the belly. You see that little antenna right there sticking out of the belly. Um, coaxial cable routed through my, my wire holders. Everything's neat and clean still. Runs up through the console and then up to the unit here. Um, the provided six foot cable didn't do it. So I had to go to an eight foot and couldn't find an eight. So I'm using a 10. Um, so that's why I have this little service loop right there. And uh, really not a bad install. Uh, like I said, there's four wires. You got your positive, your negative, and your two serial uh, wires. And those serial wires come over to the back of the EFIS. And see where my hand is here. This is the B sub pin connector. So those two wires go into there. You got to pull that apart and pick the right pen holes. In my case, I went into serial eight in and out and put that back together and penned it in. That was really the most difficult part. And then coming over here to the screen, I don't know if I'll get reception here in the, uh, in the hangar, I had it a minute ago, but it basically on the corner here, tra the traffic display will pick up. All right guys, so this ADS-B1 is the, uh, the signal that it's receiving that information. Um, I don't have the traffic showing up or the map overlay because I'm inside the hangar. But here's your, I'll show you in flight, it will be a little bit better display what was going on. I was working just a second ago, but like I said, inside the hangar, I'm not getting reception. But on the uh, map screen, you can scroll through and you can get now, you can get radar. Um, or METARs, and that information will show up over here on the map. And if I go out of that and go to the um, main screen, you can do your screen options, get rid of the split, and then over here um, in the insets, right now I've got the video, and when the traffic comes in, it pops up over here on the side with another box. Um, play around with it, see, see what's going on with it, and uh, it gives you a status light on it so you know that it is getting power and working. So over here there should be a green light. See that green light there? Right there. So hopefully this is working with the audio. And I've got an ND8 filter on my screen so hopefully I can show you what's going on with the uh, GRT setup. The uh, I got the Hero 9 camera running up here and you can't open the door and plug in the mic without the battery falling out. So I had to run some tape around it. So hopefully that's all working. So two things we're doing here. We're gonna go um, 
Do a little video, video here of the screen, show you what's going on with that, and then uh, I'm also doing a little recon for um, my dad. They run a guest resort not too far from here that's snowed in, and uh, he's got some more snow. He wants me to check the road and see if it, they can get in there yet. So that's what I'm doing. If We'll kind of see what the weather's doing. If it's really bumpy up in the mountains, I'll may not go all the way up there. We'll see. So hopefully this filter's working on the camera. Uh, I just want to point out a couple things on the screen. You can see my little video down here. When it's pointed directly at the sun, it's not very useful because the sun washes it out real bad. But I turn then here, you'll see it better. Four, six, six, four, eight, four. Ready to take off on runway three three. So anyway, the inset there is video, and on the other side is traffic, which is new. That's the new um, ADS-B receiver that I've got going on there. So that's what I'm going to be playing around with today. So I'll show you kind of how I set it up here in flight. Right now I've got the iPad on the other side. It's also receiving that same ADS-B information. Um, but what I'll do once I get airborne, or actually I'll do it right when I get up to the taxi line here because I don't need the camera anymore is we go to um, screen options right here hit the screen option and then I do uh, PFD options and then I do a split screen and that puts the map on the right side and all the ADHARS information on the left side and you can set up what you want synthetic vision terrain whatever on on that side so the reason I did that is I want to see if the traffic shows up on the map side We'll play around with that once we get up in the air. Yeah, we're all warmed up. Temperatures are good. We got fuel. Systems checks are all on. Check the fuel pump. On the backup pump now. Go back to the main one. All right, we're all set. Go ahead and uh, take off here. And we're just going to climb out and head kind of northwest. Veterinary traffic. Experimental Kit Fox taking runway 33 will be straight out departure. Right, try zooming out a little bit and see if we can get any traffic. Here we go. All right, so if you guys can see this, you got traffic here and here showing up on that screen. They're way higher, they're airline uh, planes, but that's pretty cool that the traffic is showing up on there. That means it's working. Um, if they're also showing up. Yep, so I've got them showing up over on the iPad also. So that ADS-B end system has uh, got a Wi-Fi feature to it. And so the Wi-Fi is connected to the iPad. So um, I believe the ADHARS, the other thing I want to check is the ADHARS information, if it's being see over the iPad. I don't know if you can see that with the other camera here. Engineer Park, Gustavia 4664 Echo, and it is being final, uh, three, three. broadcasted to the iPad also. So the whole the whole system is working. I've got traffic on the main screen and on the iPad. I've got the ADHARS information coming from the EFIS going to the iPad. So I've got a basically a dual setup here. Now, if this failed or the ADHARS failed in this, that would fail on the iPad also. So I still have the Stratus in here as a backup for that particular situation. If I needed it, I could, I could, uh, Turn that on and have Adhar's information going to the iPad. All right, so let me talk a little bit about this DRT because hopefully you can see it. If you can't, then this whole <laughs> flight's a waste of time. But with this filter, I'm running on the camera. Hopefully that that works now. So um, right now I've got split screen. Um, it does have the you know your your kind of classic EVIS setup with your airspeed information on the left side, altitude and vertical speed information on the right side. Um, and then attitude information in the center. Got an HSI down here in the middle. That gives you your course information. And then on the right side is a moving map. Um, it does do terrain on that moving map. Uh, is an option also. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up right now. I did do a, a software update, so maybe that's something I need to do. Map options. Uh, okay, yeah, so I need to go to terrain. There's shading, there's terrain, that's pretty cool. You can do an arc view, you can do a center view, uh, north up, that's kind of a cool view too if you want to be oriented. 
and, or you can put a big old HSI over there. So um, I'm going to do the arc view. Actually, I like the center view. I'm going to do the center view with the terrain shading and then go back to the home position. See how bumpy it's going to get up here. All right, so hopefully you can see out uh, from the other cameras that are heading kind of towards the snow-covered peaks. That's the Trinity Alps, and that's where uh, I'm going to go scout the road and see if the road is how deep the snow is. I mean, I obviously can't tell from the air, but I want to see if there's snow on the road all the way up to uh, where this resort is. I'll show you a couple other things. If you get away from the split, then that traffic comes up over here on the right. Video's back on the left. One of the things you can do with the video is you can actually turn it on so that the video covers the whole back screen. So you can see there that the camera is now my uh, main screen. You do the same thing if you had FLIR, which would be kind of cool. Um, you know, if you were flying at night, you could pull that up. That'd be pretty cool. You can do a six-pack. You know, if you're used to the old style instruments, that, that would be a, another option there. I'm going to go back to split so I can see the map and select the home button. That puts me back on my main menu. Now, while we're talking about screens, I don't know if you can see in the view of this camera, but here's the AEM uh, engine monitor. You can skip having this AEM engine monitor and do a... Uh, like a e EFIS or EMS 4000 from GRT, and that would display all your engine instrument stuff on this screen as well. All right, the wind picked up quite a bit. We're now doing 20, about 20 on the nose. I like having a separate screen, though, for the engine, especially with the Yamaha, um, and it's 100% customizable, so Brian Dacus has set this up. So we have alarms that trigger, lights that flash during, you know, if you, if you see something, if it sees something that is a little off, we have all these all alarms and warnings set, and that's all um, done through a program with uh, AEM software. So I really like that unit. Um, I think it's definitely a, a, a nice combination to have a dedicated flight in, a screen and then a, a separate engine screen. It'd be nice if you could can bust them together so you had a backup if one of, you know, if the engine screen failed, you could then pull it up and see it on the on the EFIS, but doesn't do that. All right, so I'm coming up on uh, up over Coffee Creek Road. I saw one of my videos from last year where um, it wasn't aviation related, but I was driving up a road that had been uh, through a burn, big fire that had burned up here. Um, this is where that happened, so just north of Trinity Center, up by Trinity Lake in Northern California. That's the first time I've seen it from the air, and wow, it's like, it's pretty devastating what it did to this valley. Um, hopefully the wind camera is still going. It tore through the town of Coffee Creek, and everything wet on the west side, just it, it all burned up. All right, if the wind cam's on, hopefully it is. This meadow down here to the left is uh, where the resort is. Oh, Mount Meadow Resort. You should check it out. It's a really cool place. And my dad is, has his own property up here as well. So his cabin's at right in that center section, right between the two, the first two meadows. So yeah, looks like until we get up here, no problem. That meadow is uh, somewhere I want to land really badly. <laughs> Pretty short. We're at 5,000 feet, so. Lake off the right there. That's Josephine Lake. Still frozen. Sawtooth Ridge is right out here to the right, out this area. That's the lower pass that we're heading for is called uh, Upper Horsehaven. I fly over that and then head back, back towards Redding.
I'll go ahead and wrap this one up. You guys, thanks for watching the install of the GRT uh, ADSB end unit. It's really a cool setup. I'm stoked with how it works. It works on both displays. It gives me traffic information, uh, weather. Uh, I'm real, real happy with it. It also gives the ADHARS information from the EFIS to the iPad, which, you know, that is just an amazing. That's a really cool feature. Um, everything works good. I had to do a software update to get, get that to work, but that was real easy also. You just plug a USB uh, thumb drive into the back of the uh, EFIS after loading the file in, and you're good to go. So um, I'm going to wrap this one up. You guys, thanks for watching. The end, hit the subscribe button, and then the uh, like if you like the video, leave a comment if you have a question. Uh, I know I don't have as much content up uh, lately. Hope to get some more out as we get into the flying season. But uh, also posting up a little stuff over on Instagram. If you guys want to check out Instagram, that's uh, hashtag or whatever you do at Instagram. It's uh, Project Kit Fox. Got some cool little reel clips that have been putting up over there that uh, people are liking. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, check it out on Instagram. And you can leave me a, a comment there. I check that regularly. So if you guys have any comments or want to get a hold of me, that's another good way to do it. If not, drop me an email, bowandarrow at yahoo.com. We'll catch you on the next one.